Um, so hi everyone, welcome. This is week four of our second series of In the Kitchen with WorkWell NYC. Um, and on behalf of WorkWell, we're so glad you're all here. And, and I know I've had a lot of fun um, cooking along with you, even though you guys are the ones doing the cooking, not me. Um, but it's been really lovely these last few weeks to have this little community. Um, and since it is the last week, I do just want to say that everyone who's been registered for any of the sessions will be receiving a wrap up email. It'll have all the recipes, all the videos. Um, so you have them for reference and you can make them whenever, whenever the mood strikes or whenever you have time. Um, so yeah, you know, so we've got a lot of repeat uh, people here, but if anyone's new, welcome to work well. You know, we're, we're here to help create a, a community around being healthy, around healthy eating. Um, and we're really, really glad to have beautifully fed uh, Karen and Fiona here with us today to walk us through what looks to be another delicious recipe. So yeah. I will turn it over to you, ladies. Excellent. And the final recipe of the series, but not forever, ever, ever. In fact, at the end of our go around, Marissa, it'd be great if you could tell them what's coming up so that they can be yeah. aware of it. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yes, yeah. we're, we're going to be offering um, another In the Kitchen series, uh, definitely in 2021. So hang tight. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. All right, Fiona, you want to go next? Yeah, actually, do you want to introduce yourself and I'll just start from there and keep going with the recipe? All right, that works. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Karen Joseph Sherfis, and I am one of the partners of Beautifully Fed Food. And I live in Brooklyn, New York. My family is from Jamaica, Jamaica and Cuba. And I'm, so I'm really excited that the weather's been um, pretty mild this year, <laughs> winter. It's just been good for me, even though I, I know it's not good for, um, for the world. Uh, that's another story. Anyway, I am one of the partners of Beautiful Fed Food. We are committed to eliminating health disparities and creating healthy communities one delicious bite at a time through the cooking classes and demos um, that we lead. And we are a collective of all women of color. There are eight of us who teach these classes. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me and us. And we're really excited that this is, though this is the last class in the series, you will not be done with us yet because we're not done with you and there will be much more to come. And I can't wait for Fiona to make this recipe. If I've eaten it before. And in fact, I'm going to go over to her house after this is done to have some more. Because <laughs> I'm hungry. It's really good. Awesome. Yeah, I now have the privilege of having Karen cook in my house. So all I have to do is leave the bedroom <laughs> to taste the food now. But hi, everybody. For those of you who are joining for the first time tonight, you've been missing out, but we're glad that you're here tonight. <laughs> I am Fiona. I'm a partner with Beautifully Fed Food as well. I am a, a home cook. I am a fitness instructor, although I gained 10 pounds since this madness has been going yeah. on. So, wow. But anyway, you know, this, this is life. This is what this happens is as we just cope with life and the things that are going on. But anyway, I am super excited to have led now the second class in the series. If you were with us over the summer, I was the co-host. And so I finally had the opportunity to, to lead you through a couple of the recipes that I enjoy. And so I'm really thankful that you all have been with us and super excited to um, do this lasagna squash boat tonight. So this was, you know, when I, I was coming up with this for this class, this was one of the first times that I really started playing around with these boats, but I've done so many different things with it since then. I've actually mm -hmm. done like a, a, a boat with, which is my favorite actually, with curried chickpeas and kale. That mm. is such a yummy recipe. And so I definitely would encourage you to take what we do tonight and then play around with it. Stuff the squash with different things that you like because it really is such an amazing and versatile way to just maybe skip the rice for a night or whatever it is, just like dump it into a, a spaghetti squash boat. So on that mm. note, let's get started. So again, who is cooking with us tonight? I know Esther's in the kitchen. I know Ava's in the kitchen. Anybody else? You can mention it in the chat. Feel free to unmute exactly. yourself. Again, you know, we're going to be chatting. I'm always chatting. So, yeah. and I also am going to be sipping on this. It's a little bit of pineapple <laughs> juice and a lot of seltzer because I'm really thirsty. I've had a super busy day today. So 
just bear with me. Has anybody else had a really crazy day? Because I, and I was actually thinking, you know, this is such a great test of this recipe. Like after a really crazy day, is this something that I want to come mm. in? So let's see how I feel after doing this. And you tell me how you feel as <laughs> well if you've had a busy day, <laughs> if you would do it again. All right, so yeah. let's get started. Hopefully you have already roasted your squash or um, it's in the oven roasting if it's not there yet. So I have, I want to show you something that happened with my squash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was telling Karen earlier that I was telling Karen and Marissa earlier that something happened that I was like, oh no, that's not how that was supposed to go. But when I looked at it again, I said, you know what? I kind of like this. I think, I think I might do this intentionally again at some point. So we have instructions for cutting your squash, which I realized I didn't follow, which is why this happened. So I have one side of my squash, which is much bigger than the other side. I don't have two even, two even pieces of squash. But I was like, you know what? It's kind of cool because I just have a deeper boat here that I can use to load more stuffing into. Mm -hmm. And then this is like a little, a little snack rather than like, this is a whole meal and this one is a snack. So it was unintentional, but I've decided that I kind of like it and I might do it again at some point. So that's where I am. My squash is already roasted. You all who are cooking with us, Esther, Ava, have you already roasted your squash? Ava shaking her head no. That's okay. Mine, it actually, it's totally okay. Mine is in the oven, but it's only been there five minutes. Yeah. That's okay, too. Yeah. And how about you, Ava? You're on mute. Un un unmute yourself, honey. Sorry. <laughs> I there just put mine in. I Rookie mistake. I should have did it earlier, but... It's okay. You know what? Depending on how large your squash is, mine is kind of small. Do you have a much larger small squash or is yours also on the smaller um, side? Do you have? A, yeah, it's like a medium size and I cut it just how you did. One, one side bigger than the other. <laughs> I, always, I always do that for some reason. I only got it perfect like one time. But you know what I didn't do this time around that what? I think caused this is that I, in the recipe, it, talk, it talked about cutting off the bottom so that you have a level surface. That's yeah. what I didn't do. So because I didn't have that steady surface and I it was rushing, uneven. Yeah. it cut uneven. So, I, you know, this is a great reminder that it really does make a difference to make sure that you're using a level surface also because it's just safer. You really want to make sure that you are cutting on a flat surface. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that by the time we got, get done with the mixing, you'll be totally fine. Your, your exactly. squash will be ready. So just keep an eye on it though. You can decide how soft you want it to be. I decided to make mine kind of al dente today. All righty, so All right. um, I think that there's- Do we have to keep it 10 minutes or can I take it out now and cut it and put it face down? Um, oh, you haven't cut it yet. You can try it. Take it out. Because and give it a yeah. in the instructions it said first soften it and then cut it, right? Yeah, exactly. that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. I think you can try. Yeah, see if you can cut through it. Yeah, see if you can cut through it. Okay. So you know, you said you made it out there. So how many minutes did you how many minutes did you leave in the oven for? So I left mine in the oven. So I put it in for I put it in. Can we there's an echo. Find where the echo. Yeah, yeah, we need to mute someone. So yeah, we need to mute someone. Let's try muting everybody. Maybe let's try this. Maybe let's try this. Okay, so I initially put okay, mine in the so oven just on three. Hold on, hold on one second. <laughs> Sorry, Fiona. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, but this Sorry, is great. Fiona. Perfect. Yeah. So I put mine in the oven initially for about 10 to 15 minutes, only on 350 though. So it was kind of not a hot oven and that allowed me to cut it. And then I put it back in for maybe about 20, 25 minutes. 
And that gave me an al dente with my particular size, because, you know, it's going to vary depending on the size of your squash. So who's asking that question? Does that mean that you're cooking with us? Was that my cousin who asked that question? <laughs> yes, of course, my cousin that asked Because I, I always left my little, it put it at 400 degrees uh -huh. and left it there for about an hour. So that's oh. good to know. Oh, OK. Yeah, you know, I was actually reading an article just today where someone mentioned that they would typically leave it in for an hour and realize that it was far too long, that they didn't. Yeah. But again, again, it, does, it depends on your squash. If you have a giant squash, maybe you need an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say without seeing the size of your squash. All right, folks, so let's get rocking and rolling. We are going to, I feel like this is the way we start every recipe. I have my two tablespoons of olive oil in my pan. And I am going to get started with my onions, just cooking those until they are tender and translucent, maybe a little brown. So awesome. let's get started with that. And remember everybody, uh, Fiona has Ooh. two cameras going. One is to her face when she's talking to us and the other is over her pan. So I'll be spotlighting from time to time her pan when she goes over there. Yeah, I'm back um, here though because my oil is Yeah, so I've, I've, I've got to follow you. Karen keeps muting me. I think that, you know, like I said, I like to <laughs> talk and maybe she's just like, I've had enough. <laughs> uh, so while my oil is getting hot, who, um, who, the seeds that come out of your squash, what do you do with it, if anything? Do you roast them as well? I don't but I know some people do. I'm curious to know if any of you have roasted your seeds after taking them out. Yeah. yeah I've, I've, the same thumbs up. Elizabeth, Ava, you, can you give us some tips for roasting them effectively? Because I've done it once and it was like a soupy mess and I was like, never mind. Did you put it on like a cookie pan just and bake them in the oven? I, and I heard also the trick really is drying them, like making sure they're super dry before you put them in the oven. Correct. Yeah. Usually I, Mine were I, still put, wet. I put them on a paper towel, like after I wash them to get the sliminess off. Got it. Right on a paper towel. That's we also tricky. have used that in the past with my unfortunately long past grandfather, but we use that to plant them as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. For, yeah, for another year, a year of uh, zucchini, not this kind of plant, but other kinds of plants. That's right. pretty cool. Are yeah. you cooking with us? I am bit? cooking, but I'm cooking something different. I'm cooking zucchini. What do you mean? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice, but you're cooking. We love that. What, what, are you do, what are you doing with your zucchini, Elizabeth? I'm just going to stir fry it um, lightly with some leeks and garlic. Oh. Yum. And I'm going to coat it lightly with a mint and... Mm. That sounds amazing. Thanks for cooking okay. with us, son. Yeah, it's fun to watch while I'm doing it. <laughs> this is company. Yeah. Right? <laughs> company, right? Company in the kitchen. So while the onions are starting to cook down, let's talk about mushrooms. So I laugh sometimes at how similar Karen and I are. I'm like, gosh, are we separated at birth or something? Because <laughs> we were in a meeting the other day when people were talking, and there was a question about food. And they asked us, what food did you not used to like that you like now? Mm -hmm. And Karen said mushrooms. And she, she said exactly what I used to think. The reason she didn't like it is because it's fungus. Like, fungus. no, Ew. the fact that why am I eating fungus? Like, <laughs> it makes no sense to me. No. I, I used to say the same thing. And to be honest <laughs> with you, she's probably, she probably came around a lot sooner than I did. I'm just. <laughs> around to eating mushrooms but aren't they delicious aren't they freaking no, they're, amazing they're fine okay. they're fine she's, she's not there yet y'all she's, she's not there yet you'll get there i'm not in there. love yet but yeah, you're not love I, I continue to try right so Sh shiitake shiitake might take you over the edge of you I yeah. Yeah. are you what's what was, your favorite kind of mushroom what'd you say elizabeth i'm italian what do you think we'd be <laughs> But I was like you when I was little. We did not. I did not like them. Like I was repulsed by them. But yeah, um, yeah. two things. Uh, one, you know, I'll make like a mushroom pasta sauce or a mm -hmm. mushroom barley mm -hmm. soup, 
Um, my aunt makes stuffed mushrooms, which are delicious, but I just don't make them. But my grandfather, who came to this country at the turn of the last century, so like in the early 1900s, would pick wild mushrooms from Pelham Bay Park, which was like the biggest park in New York at the time, you know, in the Bronx. And he could pick them out, like spot them and know which ones you could eat and which ones were like lethal. And- uh, Oh, wow. The funny that story. intuition, <laughs> it's beautiful, that intuition, yes. And the funny story is my, my mother and father were dating and my mother was like, oh no, I'm not eating those. And she said she watched everyone eat them to see if they were going to die or not. And then oh she my said, God. <laughs> then I'll try. I, I like the way she thought. That story. Thank you. you for sharing that. So I want to keep us moving, right? So moving. I have um I have portobello mushrooms and I just wipe them clean. So if you have a lot of dirt on your mushrooms, yeah. you can like really quickly rinse them, but otherwise you can just use a damp paper towel and just wipe them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does anybody have any other methods for cleaning your mushroom? I know some people use a brush if you need to, but mine are looking really good. So all I had to do, again, this is my portobello. All I had to do was Huge. just wipe them clean. Huge, right? I don't know any better, honestly. Because <laughs> like I said, I'm just getting into mushrooms. <laughs> um, I have a question. Sure. Who's is that? there Imani? Hi. Hey, hi, Imani. Uh, is there a reason that you don't wash mushrooms like other produce? I was about to tell you. So glad. Oh, okay. yes. And Imani, you're the one who said in the chat that you're not there yet, right, with mushrooms? No, no, no. I, I will pick them out. My brother will sometimes <laughs> try to jazz up marinara sauce. He'll dice up mushrooms really finely and put them in the sauce thinking I won't notice. And I will sit there and pick out every oh my God. last little bit. I've, I've been there, Imani. I've oh, been there. Karen, <laughs> so, yes, yeah. I, before you go, Karen, I just want to make sure those who are in the kitchen, I'm cutting up my mushrooms here. I'm going to yeah, dice yeah. them. And I've gotten past the point where I have to make them really, really tiny, Imani, but I was there not that long ago. So make sure that you're now dicing up your mushrooms because when your onions are ready, we're then going to add our garlic mm -hmm. and then add our mushrooms. So please make sure that you're prepping your mushrooms while we're hearing this from Karen. Beautiful. So the thing with mushrooms, they're really spongy. And so if you put them under running water, they'll absorb all the water and then you'll have soggy mushrooms and nobody wants that. And that's why we don't wash them. You simply pat them dry. And, and some people have said, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no. Well, you, 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 you can rinse them. If you rinse them, rinse them lightly because some mushrooms, I mean, they, they are fungus and some of them are dirty. And so just patting them doesn't necessarily work. So I like to wet a paper towel and really rinse. And sometimes I will like just put it under the water and quickly take it out and not like submerge them, but just like hold it under and remove it. And that works for me. Yeah, I was also reading that some people feel like it like minimizes the flavor of the mushroom when you wash mm -hmm. them because of I the extra see that. water content. Yeah, you know, it'll totally. kind of dilute the flavor a little bit. Yeah. Can't say that I know how true that is since it's, I would you say know, it's true. We're on a <laughs> mushroom journey together, those of you who are mushroom. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely agree with that because it's such a delicate flavor, the mushrooms in part. And so, yeah, if you're adding a whole bunch of water to it, it will dilute that experience for you. Yeah. Okay. Any, any tips for how you're dicing? You take the, how you're dicing the mushrooms? Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go again. All right, let's try it. Yeah, any tips for how you're dicing the mushrooms? Yeah, I'll be right back. So uh -huh. I pretty much just, I slice them. I slice uh -huh. the mushroom this way. And, you know, I'm using my claw because I'm protecting my fingers. Mm -hmm. And those of you, oh, no, I'm not going to talk about it today. <laughs> 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 I've already told you my secret about how sometimes I curl my toes when I'm curling my fingers. Bizarre. <laughs> but I know some of you do wear things in the kitchen, too. I am not the only one. So We're not judging. We're not here to judge. <laughs> and it's okay. So you've got the claw because you protect your fingers that way. You're holding it down your knife. You're actually holding the knife on the blade itself because that gives you greater control of the knife. And then I know I shouldn't have all this stuff on my, and then you're just rocking back and forth. So this is how I'm starting. And then from here, I am going to, I don't think I want to use all these mushrooms. So 
This is just for me. I don't think that you have to do it this way, but this is just the way I'm doing it. So then I'm gonna slice it this way. And then I'm just going to come back again and do it this way. But I don't think you have to do this at all. I think you can, you know, yeah. So, so, so you're making slices and not dices. Well, I sliced and then I diced. The and then slices. Okay, you are. Yeah. Okay, okay. I didn't so see here, that. I ended up with yeah. my dice. There we go. Beautiful. And then I wanted to just make it a little bit smaller because again, Amani, I'm with you. Um, so I'm just going through and just kind of chopping it a little bit more, but you know, you decide what size you want to have your okay. mushrooms. But remember, and, oh, you are going to stuff them into the squash bowl, so you do okay. want them to be a little bit on the smaller side. So for folks who are not there with mushrooms yet, they're not ready to begin their mushroom journey what would they what would you suggest they put into um their squash to stuff it what else might you put in any veggies that you like you know because this is all yeah. about just loading up on the veggies in a nice cheesy way so i think any yeah. veggie you like is perfectly fine you know mushrooms Ava, just or, like... i was gonna go ahead finish that thought and then i want to ask ava and esther if they're loading theirs with anything different yeah i think Mushrooms do have like this meaty kind of texture to them. So it does mm -hmm. just give a dish a little more oomph to it, which is why I'm true. using mushrooms in this. But I think that truly any veggies that you like are veggies that you should put in this dish. Yeah. I think even yeah. grains or beans would be good to add too. Now that you say the, the meaty texture, like to mm -hmm. add more substance to it. I think I, of course, you know, I love farro. So I'd put farro in there with some, with some um, cannellini beans. Yeah, you can put some, Yum. yeah. So, you know, As, it's a lasagna. So whatever, a lasagna. I think, whatever you're putting, when you think of lasagna, whatever veggies you might think to put in your lasagna, you can put in this as well. That's but again, we were also saying, there's so many variations on, on the lasagna boat. So right. I think that that dish that Karen made last week, the farro with the kale or spinach or whatever it is with the fennel, it was mm -hmm. so amazing. There was, what were, you had sweet potatoes in there? There's sweet potatoes, yep. Right, so For I sure. feel like instead of putting sweet potatoes in that dish, you can do the farro with the greens and all the spices and, and stuff add it into to this. your boat. Oh, yeah, easily. Because you'll have For a sure. similar flavor profile there. Yeah. Okay. And your so boat my... can be the spaghetti squash. It could also be acorn squash. Any squashes would serve. You could even put it in the sweet potato. Like your your options are endless. Yeah. Is anybody else ready to add your mushrooms to your pan? And how is your your um spaghetti squash going? Have you taken that out? Where are you there? Yeah, Esther, have you cut yours yet? Um, there we go. My spaghetti squash is still so hard on the outside. Should I just take it out yeah. and cut? It feels very hard when I poke it. Yeah, it's still gonna feel hard. It's just oh. softening up, softening it enough so that you okay. can get the knife through okay. without having to really yeah, chisel yeah. and soft. Okay. So yeah, just back. remember it put it back in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's you can cut it now. See. Also, what what temperature is your oven at, Esther? I I put it at three fifty for the softening part because first I put it at four hundred. Then you said you had put yours at three fifty for the oh. softening. So now yeah. I put it back up to 400, right? Yeah, 400 would be great. I just left mine in a bit longer for the softening yeah. part. That's okay. why I use the lower temperature. Okay. Okay, so folks, my onions and garlic, they're ready. And just in case you don't have the recipe and you're not following along with us, I, um, I have about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil in there, mm -hmm. about a half cup of onions that I diced up, two to three garlic cloves. I have about two cups of mushrooms, maybe even a little bit more. So I'm gonna add that in now and just let that brown. And you don't want to really crowd your pan, right? So yeah, yeah I may end up crowding my pan, which is okay for now. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, if you wanna get a nice brown thing going, you don't wanna crowd your pan because it'll steam more than it yeah. Good tip. Also, Fiona, there's some questions in the chat about mushrooms. For one, um, 
Marv asked whether or not we take the gills out, but I saw you didn't, you don't remove the gills, you just cut it straight. And yes, Imani, mushrooms have gills. It's on the underside of the mushroom, the little, um, the lines that are on them. I don't know if they're, are they actually called gills? I think they are, they are I'm not sure why they're called gills, but they're called gills. Um, Do people take the gills out? I've, I don't, I don't, I've never learn to take the gills out and it, it seems really like integral to like attached to the mushroom so I don't know about that but yeah we we use it the whole thing and also our philosophy with cooking our being beautifully fed food we like to use the whole vegetable whenever possible so there's also a question about do we keep the spinach stems yes we keep we all 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 the vegetables we we tend to use all of it um what, when it comes to stems of leafy greens like spinach and um, Swiss chard and such, we cut the stems really small, really fine, and usually we'll put them in first to cook them up so that they cook well with the with the leafy part. Yeah, you definitely all these questions are great. Part. You all yeah. could also come off mute if you want to and share with us um because we'd love to hear your voice. But thank you for for talking to us in the chat too. This is really helpful. Okay. So I didn't end up crowded. Well, it's a bit crowded, but the mushrooms yeah. aren't on top of each other but there isn't much space between them. But it's fine because they're still gonna cook and be delicious. Yes. Do you so, want to show us them? Should I highlight? Yeah, sure. I think you can see them see. on the oven there. Yeah, I see them. There are yeah. a lot of mushrooms. So that's mushrooms, that's onions and garlic. And garlic, yeah. Yum! So good, okay. So What's from next? here, we are going to be adding um, our diced tomatoes okay. which i i got out of a can <laughs> i always okay. feel shameful when i'm like <laughs> i got this out of a can but it's totally fine i just have to get over myself so i got <laughs> i had some diced tomatoes <laughs> no but seriously i do want to address that you know i yeah, i went to this thing over quarantine just because i had a little more time and i became this like purist i had this streak during different times in my life where I'm like, I have to make my own almond milk. I have to make my own chicken stock. I have to do all these things myself, but you don't. Like, it's absurd. No, life is doing. so busy and crazy. And all I did was drive myself crazier trying to do that. So it's absolutely fine using tomatoes out of a can. If you can, try to find a can that says that the lining is BPA free because that is you know, a chemical that could potentially leak yeah. into your food. So just be mindful of those types of things. Read all the label, read the front, yes. read the back, read everything on the can. Um, the front tends to be primarily marketing stuff that they want you to, they use to draw you in. But then the back mm -hmm. has all the stuff about the nutrients that are really super important. So and I the am ingredient going, list, which you want to pay attention to. Correct. You want to have, you want to buy things that have as few ingredients as possible and are as close to their natural source as possible. Look at how these mm -hmm. mushrooms have cooked down. This is something that I remember okay. you talking about last week, Karen. Yeah. About how the mushrooms cook down. They really do. Mm. And the key to, to making mushrooms tasting really good, y'all, is doing exactly what Fiona is doing, and that is you put them on on over heat, and you leave them alone. Leave them. You leave, yeah. you just let them cook, and they will get like this brown color, and that's how they develop all their. It's basically it's caramelization, and that's how they de they develop all of their flavor, and it'll be so tasty. Otherwise, it's just like not good, like just spongy something in a soup. Nobody wants that. No, just <laughs> make it flavorful, <laughs> and then it, and then it's delicious, and then you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm eating fungus! Wow. Oh, so Esther, do you mind if we come to your kitchen and see how it's going as you cut your your squash? How? Because I see that is it still pretty hard, Esther? Your squash. Unmute yourself, dear. Yeah, it looks like she's. I've called it. for manual yeah, help. <laughs> you got reinforcements. So is it still really yeah. hard? How big of a squash do you have? It might be a really big squash. Oh, perfect. Oh. Yay. When I'm making two, because I uh -huh. feel like after all the trouble, might as well make two. Yeah, I, I agree with you. The second one for some other stuffings that you can play around with. That would be fun. 
Yeah. What about turkey uh, stuffing from Thanksgiving? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have some leftovers. Oh. Yes, for sure. Thanksgiving stuffing is my favorite side dish from, from Thanksgiving. Thank I love the stuffing. So good. Yeah, put it in, in everything. Eat it with a sandwich. More bread. Bread with bread with bread. I'm not. Ignore me. Let's carry on. Where are we, Fiona? We got our mushrooms going. Now we see your face. Okay, I'm following you. It is hard to follow so you just, all around the place. I, yeah, I see yeah. what you're talking about now. Okay, go. <laughs> so the mushrooms, I'm just letting them brown for a little bit longer. And then I'm going to add the tomatoes and then finish it with the, with the, um, with the spinach. And then we'll add in our herbs. So I know that last week we toasted the herbs first. And I was kind of debating, should we do that first? Should we add it after? So... I decided to just add it now, but I think that we can also toast them like we did last week, right? Yeah. So different techniques. Yay! Karen, what do you, yeah, so do you have you noticed a, a big difference in the flavor when you add it before versus at this point in the meal? Do you have, remind me, do you have fresh herbs or dried herbs? We're using dried herbs, which I know sometimes are, are you know, the flavors enhance when you toast exactly. them. Exactly. So that, that's yeah. the difference. The flavor is more, it opens up. There's more, um, yeah, there, there's just more aroma to the dish and therefore more more flavor to the dish if you've been cooking the herbs, the dried herbs from the very beginning versus adding them mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. Sometimes what I do when I, when I forget, because sometimes when you're cooking, you know, you're doing multiple things at once, you do forget. And I add the dried herbs at the end. I all, if I happen to also have fresh herbs around, mm -hmm. I'll also mm -hmm. add that at the end just to, you know, to continue to enhance my mm -hmm. experience of it. I was going to say that. I want. I buy like a big bunch of fresh herbs. Okay. I, I I let them dry, chop them, then I put them in a ziploc and throw them in the freezer. So I take a handful, and they're really very potent still. I so bet. I put them in like my cooking. Then I really yeah, smart. So I have like bit. dill. <laughs> nice. And I, I just I just learned that an easy way to dry to um to freeze herbs that you bought fresh is in addition to Fiona's way, which is you can put it into cubes in your ice cube tray and put it in oil or put them in water, depending on what you want. You can also just dry them, like Elizabeth said, rinse them, have them hang them out to dry, and then once dry, you just put those in a Ziploc bag. And yeah. put them in the freezer and you have your own dried herbs like oh I can make my own dried herbs I unintentionally did that so I had some time <laughs> in my refrigerator oh, I <laughs> and so. I was like oh I have dry time now this is great perfect, perfect. <laughs> did, did you did you freeze it or you ended up using them no I just used it yeah yeah that happens too I love yeah. it Okay, checking in. How are you folks doing? Okay. I just added my can of diced tomatoes. Where is everybody else in the process? And I was yeah. curious, what is this? Oh, I was going to ask you cooking. Uh, no, Elizabeth, because I Elizabeth. know that um, you've interacted with us. I wasn't sure if you were cooking with us tonight, Elizabeth Greenspan. <laughs> but I see that you're not in the kitchen. But those who are... I, in I am in the yeah. kitchen. Yeah, oh, there, there, are two, there are two Elizabeth. Oh, sorry, sorry. Elizabeth not tonight. Elizabeth. Not tonight. Yeah. Hasn't been a good day. Oh, I, yeah. I'm sorry. But I'm glad I'm that you're with us. Hopefully, yeah. this will help to lift your spirits. My significant other is in the hospital, so. Oh, Elizabeth, I'm so sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah, he. I was gonna go, but he, but he want he doesn't want me there, and they're not allowing any visitors. Got it. Oh my gosh, this is such yeah. a tough time. Thank you for yeah. coming and being a part yeah. of the community. You know, and that for, connection really makes a difference. Yeah. And for he, sharing so that we can support He made you. the stuffing last what? week and it came out so good. Awesome. I took a picture of it. I don't know. If, uh, let me go. Claps for you. My phone is charging. <laughs> okay. So I have my tomatoes in my pan, and I am actually Wait. just kind of mashing them a bit up there. I have to find you, Fiona. Hold on. Yep, I'm here. There you are. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just mashing them a bit so Ooh, that I can nice. have I can make it saucy. Yay, saucy, we saucy. want to make it saucy, y'all. Yum. Oh, this is going to be so good. I think I'm just going to come over with a plate. 
<laughs> I can't afford to be like, I am ready. This is fantastic. Yeah. No, it's it's so important when we're going through stuff um, to share. You know, let other people know what we're going through so that we can be supported and allow others in. So I'm really thankful for Elizabeth for letting us know what's going on with her significant other yeah, partner. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I'm so thankful that you came, you know, and that this and she feels like up. a space Thank that you. you yeah. come to when you're going through something. Exactly. That yeah. says a lot. Oh. Be well, honey. Here's the... I don't know Ooh. if you can see it, but here's ah, the... No. no, you can't I, see it. No, we can't see it. But what's, what's in it? What's in it? What's in it? Um, the, in the ingredients, body. the ingredients from the uh, the the recipes uh, oh. from the recipe Faro, the the sweet potatoes. Yeah, I was, it from last week. He made it, and he liked you all liked it. Oh, I I still have some left over. It's, it came out very well. It came out very awesome. good. That's have some of that nice. into a spaghetti squash. That would be like you can yeah. kind of stretch it a little bit more by putting okay. it into a squash. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, checking Thank in with family. folks who are cooking. Any questions about where we are, about next steps? Let us know. I'm a little yeah. behind, but I'm just following along. So I'm just putting in my garlic now and with the onions and next will be the mushrooms, right? Great. What yeah. kind of mushrooms are you using? You know, I didn't find the other ones. I sent somebody to the store. So we just got regular, the white mushrooms. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whichever kind you use is perfect. I want to learn so much more about mushrooms because now that I've opened my mind to eating the fungus, um, I know that there are, <laughs> I know that mushrooms have these amazing, like, healing properties, right? Yeah. Like, this woman yeah. who I know was telling me that after she was, like, when she was recovering from cancer, that mushrooms were a big part of her healing, and I just, I'm so fascinated by that. Does anybody know mm. about that, that part of, of mushrooms and the properties that they have that help with healing? Here comes Elizabeth. Did your yeah? <laughs> um, if you can believe it, I'm a three-time cancer survivor. Um, wow! Wow! And um, this is one of the mushrooms that I took. It's called turkey tail mushroom, and okay. it was recommended by one of my integrated doctors at Sloan Kettering. Oh and, wow! Uh, it worked in complement with my treatment that was right. standard care, but was integrated care. And another good friend of mine also treated there. He took some a different type of mushroom for prostate cancer. So mm -hmm. here we are. Wow. Yes. Say the name of the mushroom again, Elizabeth. This, this is turkey tail. But turkey there's different tail. ones for each kind. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what was it? What were the healing properties about that? That the doctor, why the doctor lifted that particular mushroom up for you? Turkey tail? Do you recall? I mean, I think it just complements, complements the treatment and you know, mm. with what you're going through um, in Got terms it. of uh, genetics and I don't know. I, I couldn't really tell you specifically. Right, yeah. but it was good for you. Fantastic. Thanks for sharing, my dear. Yeah. So Survi to survivors. Yeah. I love it. Food is medicine. Mm -hmm. Still whole food for sure. Folks, I just added my Ava, spinach. hold on a second. I want to know where Ava's at. I see you nodding at me, Ava. But what, are you, what, what are you doing? What are you cooking? Where you at? Unmute yourself. Okay, so I am um, five minutes uh -huh. out of squash. Hopefully, it's gonna be ready. Um, I got my sauce going. With the let me let me get the camera on this. You can see. Hold on, Ava. Let me see you. Hold on. You're not spotlighted yet. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Now you are. Let's go. Ooh. So what are we looking at? Mushrooms. This is my tomato, um, with the mushrooms and onions and stuff. Yeah, she's got a nice simmer, y'all. You can see all the yes. bubbles. Mm -hmm. I'm about to Delicious. put the spinach in and then all the herbs. And nice. then I check the, I'm going to fork the squash to see if it's ready. Okay. If not, I'm going to yeah. let it go for a while longer. But I'm okay. right with y'all. She's right here with us, y'all. <laughs> this is amazing. I love Thank it. You. All the stages. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. 
Yeah, Ava, we're on the we're on the same page. I just added my spinach, oh, yeah. my herbs. Oh, 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 hold on a second. I removed your spotlight instead of spotlighting it. Gallery, where are you at? And I decided oh, not I to chop you. my spinach. I'm not sure why I decided not to chop my spinach. I like it whole because it looks pretty. Yeah, and I think I'm I'm gonna add a little bit more. I need to see more green here. Um, are we supposed to be looking at the, which camera's on? There are two, so I'm going to make it easier for everybody and remove the spotlight on the one where there is no Fiona. So here you are. <laughs> can, you, can you see? We're looking at her pan now. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, with all, look at all the colors, y'all. Yeah. That's I love so bright colorful. green. Yes. Yeah. And, and when, you're, when you're eating all your colors, you know you're you're getting all your nutrients because exactly. every nutrient has a color assigned to it, and this mm -hmm. is amazing. Mm -hmm. oh. So I am going to turn this off because I just wanted to just slightly wilt the spinach. I don't want to yep. overcook it, so I think this is ready to go. Well, I don't yeah. know if it's ready to go yeah. because I haven't tasted it. That oh, all I was about to say. To <laughs> that's how you'll know. Yeah, I'm feeling like I want. I'm gonna want to add more herbs to it, but let me taste it okay. first. Like that, like that. I'm coming back over here so that I can taste it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You messed up. <laughs> okay. No. Well, no, we we didn't see we didn't see you put it in, but we're seeing the experience of it. So mm. continue. How, mm? how I like you? it. I like it because it's fresh. Like. Mm. It's not overpowered by any particular of the, the like herbs that I put in. Like it's a nice mm. blend of the rosemary and the basil and everything. So I'm actually not going to put any more. I like wow. this. Wow. Mm. I love mm. it. I love when you could taste everything in one bite where nothing is like mm -hmm. fighting for attention. It's all, ah, yeah. they all play well together. That's Cause something, yeah, something that I think I recognize, like, I know that we have some folks on with us who have a Caribbean or West Indian background, but I think that there's a tendency to like put so much seasoning in the food. So yeah. because we like things to be flavorful, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I recognize that when we do that, you 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 drown out the, the natural flavor yeah. of whatever the yeah. food is. You know, you don't yeah. taste the freshness of the tomatoes or the or the spinach. You're just tasting yeah. all the spices. Yeah. So I think I'm appreciating mm. just being able to taste the natural flavors of the foods. Yeah. Interesting. That's especially true when you're cooking with um, whole foods and, and fresh produce and so forth. It's really important to just allow that flavor to naturally sing and mm -hmm. have everything complement it. I think a lot of yeah. our folks from the Caribbean, you know, yeah, we were cooking with, with fresh fruits and vegetables back home, but here oftentimes we we're relying on packaged goods and processed foods and wanting to like make make up for that and kind of adding more stuff to it. So it's a balance, but yeah. Yeah. All righty. So Ooh, okay. I, so now what happens? Here's my squash that I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. What are you doing with the fork? Yeah, that's what they uh, So I am just scraping it raking so that it. you can get that spaghetti i'm raking it pardon moi okay. i'm raking it <laughs> <laughs> to get that spaghetti texture texture there you done. go oh yeah that cool. only works with spaghetti squash that's why they call spaghetti it spaghetti squash because when you when mm -hmm. you use your time before you make that happen yep great question lillian mm-hmm Right. So I probably could have cooked this a little bit more, but it's okay. I'm going to put it back in the oven anyway. Okay. So I'm just raking this one. So uh, cousin um, Marva, <laughs> I think that I should have left it in a little bit longer. You were asking how long I left this in. You know, that 20 to 30 minutes, I probably should have done like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, I'm putting, I'm going to stuff it and put it back in. So that'll give it yeah. another chance to soften up. Definitely. Definitely. Are you adding cheese to this? Of course I'm adding Of course. Cheese. Oh, cheese. Um, cheese. Hopefully you folks have grated your cheese. 
That's and even if they're cheese. vegans here with us, there are so many good vegan cheeses now that actually melt and and feel gooey and do all the things. So you get to play if you if you like cheese and if you've been missing cheese, play with that. And for folks who aren't vegan but might be putting off dairy or lactose intolerant or whatever, also it's it's really great to play with vegan cheeses. Easy. I mean, they even smell like cheese. They bought vegan Parmesan the other day, and I was like this smells like Parmesan cheese. This is really bizarre. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just know you can, you can experiment. So, okay, so I'm appreciating my little baby boat so much. I like it. It's so cute. <laughs> For those it's of you adorable. who weren't here earlier, I mentioned that, you know, I didn't follow my own advice of cutting off the bottom of the squash so that it could be level and I ended up not cutting it evenly. But now I have this so cute little baby squash boat. And then I have this one. The big mommy squash. Uh, <laughs> Both. That's okay. adorable. The baby squash can be my for my plate. Um, <laughs> Lillian is asking about adding sour cream instead of cheese. Hmm. I have thoughts about sour cream. Fiona, what what about you? I'll let you go first if you have. Thoughts. Um, I don't know. I mean, when I think about making, because I really am trying to give this the feel of a lasagna, and so I don't know. I haven't made lasagna with sour cream, but maybe others have. Has anybody yeah. made a lasagna with sour cream? Love it, no. Amani. You or, done? Elizabeth is saying no. Yeah, Amani saying yeah. No, I'm saying I love it because you have a ship and a canoe with your squad. <laughs> oh, oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Ship and canoe. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. <laughs> Y'all are so creative. Fiona, who, who was it that yes. did that? Um, it was Imani. You are uh, after oh. you create that. After you create those strands, you leave them in the squash. Yes, I leave them in the squash, and then I'm going to start building my layers of lasagna. Okay. So I have my cheese here. I just wanted to check in with everybody to see where you are. And then I want us to start building our layers of lasagna. Yeah. Yay! Before you build, can I answer, um, can I give Amani my answer about sour cream and what my position is? Because I have a position. So I, um, when I started getting really into like food nutrition and reading labels and so forth, I learned that sour cream is, you know, a, a product that's like made, made. it's, pro it's pro a process processed product and I was trying to eat things that weren't so processed and but I love sour cream and so what I started to do is I learned that yogurt has a lot of probiotics in it that are really good for us and we should be eating more yogurt I didn't used to like eating yogurt as a kid um, but as an adult I would get yogurt and I learned to get like the real the Greek yogurt or um, or any plain yogurt that doesn't have anything added to it. And that to that yogurt, you can add in your own things. You could add, you can make a yogurt savory, you can make it sweet. So I would add garlic to it, maybe some onions, some herbs, or or just, you know, or herb salt, and it would be, and a little bit of lemon or vinegar or something acid. Um, and I would basically season my, my yogurt and that would be what I use in place of sour cream. So now I never buy sour cream and I always have yogurt. And yogurt is something I, I, and I don't feel guilty eating it because A, it's real food and B, it's a food that's good for me because, because it's real food and because it has probiotics. So yogurt instead of sour cream. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would add it to the lasagna. I think it would be delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds easy. Play, play, I play. didn't ask yeah. about the sour cream though, no, thank you for telling else. me. Oh, because of, I'm sorry, that was Imani, right? Imani. I don't know who thank asked you. about the sour cream, but that sounds really good. <laughs> is that you, Imani? <laughs> it was Lillian. It was Lillian. It was Lillian. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you said Lillian. Uh, uh, it's always me, y'all. All right, where are we at? Fiona. <laughs> I'm yeah, hungry. Hi, Esther. Question. Hi, Esther. Uh, is your, after you add the tomatoes, the spinach and everything, what is the consistency like? Does it still have liquid in it or it's soft? It does. And mine has a little more liquid because I mashed my tomatoes because I wanted it to be a bit saucy. I mean, it's not super saucy, but it is mm. wet because I intentionally mashed my tomatoes okay. to get a little bit of a sauce. Okay. So, is anybody starting mm -hmm. to layer? Anybody adding cheese yet? I'm going to go ahead. Yeah, Ava, you've got your cheese going. So, I actually did a blend of mozzarella and pecorino cheese, which is mm. another... Actually, let's see. Where is Elizabeth? Another eight Elizabeth. Cheese. Yeah. What do you think about pecorino? Is that the a cheese that you use? 
I find it has a strong taste. Yeah. Um, but I think blended is a good thing because it complements mm -hmm. it because mozzarella is so mild. Right. Yeah. I prefer Parmesan though. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't right. have enough Parmesan, so I decided to use Pecorino for this one. And so Pecorino has, has a nice peppery taste to it too. It's really yeah. nice. I, I like it. It can be very strong and overpowering for some people. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to like strong and overpowering. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so I am putting on my putting in my first layer of cheese. So I have about yeah. two and a half cups. But please, if you want more, add more. I'm saying, mm -hmm. not. So that's the cheese and the squash. And now I'm going to, in my little canoe, add. <laughs> I like that. We have a boat and a canoe. <laughs> um, so in the canoe, so I'm doing <laughs> a layer. You all bring us so much joy. You have no idea. I After a wait. long day, being able to come and just hang out with you while we cook brings, us, brings me so much joy. Okay, mm. so here is my layer of veggies added there. Mm. Then, oh, Folks, what you got? I'll turn my oven off. Let me turn it back on. That's going to be important. Yeah, I think if, so. If we, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, thankfully yeah. everything is cooked, but we need our cheese to melt, right? We need to have yeah. really sweet cheese. Oh, it's going to be so good, you guys. I can't <laughs> wait. And then here is my layer of cheese on top of the veggies. Mm. So let's get our, our boat going. The canoe is good to go. So now let's uh, up our boat. Yeah. While you're stuffing your boat, Elizabeth Greenspan was asking about air fryers. She was asking what we think of them. I don't, I haven't used one. I, but my roommate, I, I lied, I didn't say it. My roommate has one and I've used it once. I bought. I, I'm in love with Shake Shack. Shh, don't tell anybody. And they have they have a mushroom burger there that they 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 fill with cheese. And when you bite it, it's really good. Anyway, it's not the point. Point is, they also have fries that are just okay. Um, but I really go there for the the mushroom cheese thing. And so I brought the fries home. By the time I got home, it was cold. And my roommate said, "Karen, just put them in the air fryer rather than put it." I was like, "Yeah, huh? What?" And she showed me, took it, it's this huge thing, but we put it in and they came out crispy and light and didn't have to add any oil or anything to it. I thought it was brilliant. Um, and she said that we can use it to like just air fry or anything that you would normally fry, you can put in an air fryer and, and do that. And she's vegan. And so I've been meaning to experiment with like cauliflower or another veggie. I just haven't gotten around to it. I tend not to use contraptions. But what about you, Fiona? Are you into air fryers? I'm not. But this is me going back to being this, you know, somewhat obnoxious purist. I'm like, why? Yeah. What is that? I don't understand how it's working. I'm not using that thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's this air fryer thing? I feel like when everybody was getting the Instapot and doing all these things, I got rid of my microwave. I bought all my cast iron skillets. I, uh, I, like, I need a slow cooker, right? I don't know. I just, <laughs> go out on my fire escape and start lighting a fire and cooking outside. It's so I laugh funny. at myself because I, I know it's absurd. I absolutely it's know that it's absurd and what's, there's what's, nothing wrong. What's particularly, using an air fryer. what's particularly funny about it, Fiona, is because you and I are both like really, we love technology and we love like, you know, technology in our work and in, you know, anything on the computer and whatever, like using all the applications and buying the things. But then when it comes to our kitchen, like no technology, like low tech is <laughs> is where it's at for us. And I think that's yeah. kind of hilarious. Yeah. No tech or no tech in the kitchen. But I'll I have been getting such well, a big yeah. kick out of these two um these two what? boats here. I feel like I'm gonna do this more intentionally where I have a big one and a little one. Like this is just bringing me so much joy and I the don't ship know why. and the <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. I like that they're different, you know? They don't have to be the same. They're doing their own thing, but they're both just as beautiful. <laughs> uh -huh. so I appreciate that. Who's ready to put yours in the oven? Anybody put yours in the oven yet? Ava, what's going on? Let's see. And then we'll come to you, Esther, and we'll talk to you about your seeds, okay. too. So I took mine out of my boat and canoe, and I just put it in a um, casserole dish, so... This is how mine 
Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Yay. Whoa. And why did you decide to, to take it out instead of making the boat? Um, I think the the um the skin got too soft. Oh, okay. So I mean it was perfect, like it's just the perfect consistency of the squash. So the skin got right. a little too soft, and I said, you know what? Um, I'm just gonna make this a meal for like the rest of the week. Yeah. Love that. I love I that you Yes, I love that. Yeah, she, she, she I does just her took own it out. Always. So I'm, I'm about to it. put it in the toaster oven and let it broil a little bit. Yay. And also, I guess this makes a lot of sense for your family of how many are, are you in your family? That well, you're only with? only two of us are eating this, so. Yeah. Oh, the, the kids don't. don't the kids are not, nuggets. don't eat this stuff. They don't eat, <laughs> I mean, don't eat pizza, stuff. nuggets, oatmeal, like they're just regular <laughs> schmegler kids. Like, they're not. Yeah. Yeah, I had a husband like that. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that that's very I could I could see doing that. That's yeah, really so hard. look at it. And that and then you have like for leftovers and it's just easy to serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things. Perfect. Yeah. Elizabeth, mm -hmm. how about you? I saw you just turned your camera on. Do you have some show uh -huh. and tell? Well, I didn't yeah. make your recipe, but I just Oh, that's it, right. You I, I was you were just yeah, so I made some zucchini, some fish. And some artichokes. Ooh, you didn't we want to see your dish too. Fish, yeah. I could take yours to the camera. It, well, it's a. Uh, if you're okay with it, Elizabeth, you know we don't want to. No be too intrusive. <laughs> well, it's a stovetop version of um, fish. So I have a um, a fish with just like mustard, scallion, garlic, and lemon. Yes, so and simple. Then, yes, simple. So flavorful. Quick, yes. Yeah. I'm really, I'm into the, the same way you are, though, as much as you can taste from the fresh flavors. Yeah. 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 Cool. <laughs> I'm going to okay. take so a I thoroughly enjoy playing with you guys. <laughs> oh, we enjoy playing with you, too. It is like playtime. It is. Oh, my oven is ready. So yeah. I also want to say at the beginning, I was saying it was such a, a crazy day. And I'm like, how is this recipe going to fare after having a really crazy day? I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. I think it was pretty quick, pretty easy, you know, having the squash roasted. So I've also been thinking about the fact that this could be great for meal prepping, you know, just yeah. roasting squash in advance and then just stuffing it with different things throughout the week. So I, I would do this. I would do this after a long, crazy day because that's what I had today. I mean, you all definitely helped to make the time go by and make it so much more fun. But I think it was pretty quick and easy to just do this after a long day. How, is, yeah. how are other folks feeling about it? Let's yeah. check in with Esther really quickly. I know she had a question about roasting the seeds. Oh, okay, great. Oh, no, I just wanted to show the sauce, that's all. And uh, as I as I unmuted my son, and we all made a lot of noise, sorry. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Okay. I just wanted to show the... Show us. The sauce. Okay. Ooh, yum. What do you have in there? Just what just, you had. Yeah, just the, <laughs> the mushrooms, the tomatoes, the onion, and the garlic. Yeah, yeah. The rice looks nice and thick with all the tomatoes. Oh, it's going to be delicious. Have you tasted it yet? Mm. Oh, I was going to say we don't have any salt in this, right, so far. I haven't tasted it. Oh, I, I, it. there is salt in the recipe. Oh, I but you should always add that. salt to taste. Mm. Salt to taste. Taste Washing it first and so see what you think. I'm leaving the spotlight on you so we can see you taste it, just so you know. <laughs> what do you okay. think? Nothing, what else it's would okay. you add to it? Nothing to write home about. Ah, yes. So add oh. flavor to it. What else would you add to it? I don't know. It's uh, it just like it just tastes like tomato saucy with some. Uh, I don't taste the spinach or anything. So you should definitely amp it up. So I always say a recipe is a guide, right? It's a starting mm -hmm. point. So what would yeah. you add to it? Ava, what did you add to yours? I know you always end up judging up your recipe. What else did you add? Listen, I kept it regular and it tasted good because I was, um, as you were mm -hmm. talking about tasting the natural flavors of the food, because usually I just go with the salt and I just start grinding, grinding, grinding. But today I was, I kept it light. Yeah. 
and I tasted it and it tastes, it tastes really good. I mean, it could probably use a little lemon. Mm, acid. acid. Yeah, some acid. So, but All I right. did do the, the rosemary, the oregano, the, I didn't, I didn't do any, I kept this super simple. I actually, um, I used um, pepper jack cheese. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I mixed it with a little bit of Monterey Jack. I had um, ordered a HelloFresh box and I had some like extra little packets of cheeses left over. So I said, you know, what, let me just throw this in there. See how, you know, because I know the recipe had like a little red pepper flake. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. So I said, well, I have the pepper jack. I can put a little bit of- um, There you go. A little pepper in that way. Uh -oh. uh, you know, pepper jack for I tried to I have more of this on a broil. I, I, I can't wait. Your connection is a little spotty. I can't wait to try it. I might. Um, you say that you, you can't wait to try it. It's okay. And that yeah, you yeah, added the pepper jack. It. Yay. Yes. Instead yes. of pepper and that kind of spice it up. I yeah. can't wait. I can't wait for you to try it too on camera shortly. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to Esther. How can we add some more flavor? Exactly. You heard us mention adding some salt and um, adding. I'm going to add lemon. There and you go. Uh, is this in the pan? Should I add the, uh, you know, bread uh, thingy from the Thanksgiving stuffing now? Or should that be a layer on in the boat? It can be a layer. Yeah, it yeah. can be a layer in the bowl. Okay. Yeah, but I want you to feel more excited about this, this mushroom spinach combination. Yeah, I don't so know. Just, I, I don't really have, have any rosemary. ideas what to add. So you add have the, the rosemary. See what happens. Well, let's taste it. What have you added no? so far? You've added the rosemary, the basil, the oregano, all yes. of those. Yeah. And yeah, definitely add salt. You need yeah, salt just in there. It. And then and then try try okay. the lemon. You know, for me the tomato added enough acidity, but if you want some more, then yeah, yeah. add some lemon. And Fiona, would you add the stuffing to this to this? Well, to this lasagna boat or make a separate lasagna make a separate lasagna boat with the stuffing in it yeah i mean i was thinking of it because you're gonna add are you adding cheese as well esther yes yeah i mean i was thinking of having that be a separate boat but okay yeah well how do you think the fennel because that stuffing had a really strong fennel flavor yeah mm. that's what i love about it yeah, okay. I don't know. I, 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 I try I, what I would do whenever I'm like trying to like mix dishes and then combine flavors and see if I like it. I will make it Fiona's way first. A little one, this, yeah. yeah a, or the big one, whichever. Make one that way, and then make another one with the with the um with the other stuffing with the actual stuffing that we made last week. Make it with that, mm -hmm. so it's separate. And then as you're eating it, you taste both, you combine it, you see how you like it. Yeah. And then the next time, if you really like it, you put them together and you use it as a layer. And well, then that mm -hmm. way, you, yeah, that's a great way to kind of test and see what you like before you, before you make the whole dish. Yeah. yeah. I think, I also think it'll be good when the, everything is baked together with the cheese, you know, just tasting the yeah. tomato oh, yeah. separately may not be necessarily, uh, well, well, I think that every every layer should have flavor, right? Like, okay, I think exactly. a, a really great meal is about layering your flavor. So you definitely want okay. this piece of it to also be flavorful. Okay. So, yeah, add some more, you know, maybe add some more basil, more rosemary, just okay. more. Because I have a question. Are you accustomed to having food that's really heavily seasoned? Like uh, curries and some of these other flavors that you've talked yeah, about. Yeah, maybe I could add some um, curry powder, spice powder, you know, like garam masala or something. Yeah, I mean, it's because... certainly not a traditional lasagna flavor, <laughs> but, but I make the point to say that I think your palate is very accustomed to those really strong flavors. And this Aggressive. is definitely more of a, a yeah, subtle. it's like a lighter, yeah, yeah it's yeah. definitely a lighter, but it's Add okay. More. I'm going to leave it as is and uh, and enjoy it this way. And I, mm. if I find it less spicy, I can add some hot sauce. <laughs> or 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 I was thinking. I was thinking. I think I was thinking that you might be into the, the smoky variety. Oh, so I was thinking no. smoked smoked paprika. I don't or have that. I don't, no. I don't have that in my kitchen. No, but I put uh, maybe I'll put a little more pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. Maybe, okay. Yeah, do that. Do that yeah, I think that's a great idea. Try it. Who else? Well, I mean, does anybody yeah, who else? else 
use a lot of like really heavy spices. How do you, you know, if you have a dish like this that has more of an Italian flavor profile, what would you add to it? Yeah, I'm curious. Come too. on, I know we've got put it in the chat. Here. Yeah, I'm saying Ava's got. Hey, y'all. If Ava my dad on, was um, alive, he would know. <laughs> Who's sure that? Was it? On a few if, if my dad was alive, he would know. He yeah, loved yeah. to cook. He was. He says cooking is like a science. Yeah. Mm. He that was, was a biochemist at that time. Uh, and biochemist as well. Okay. Let's see if anybody's putting anything into the chat. Love these conversations. Ooh. It's so fascinating because I do remember Esther Ooh, about the happened. flavors that you mentioned you, you typically eat. And so I could see how you would taste this and be like, oh, where's my like, oh, you want that punch when you put it in your yeah. mouth, right? Yeah. Parsley. Sorry, like I didn't parsley. mean to, but you know, to me, it, one second. To me, it tasted like um, um, almost like your home, the homemade version of a prego jar, you know? Oh. Like, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't feel any different than opening a jar of, uh, that you would put, you know, where you yeah. know, it has the tomato basil in it. Mm -hmm. So I felt almost like that. I didn't feel that all this labor gave me, <laughs> except, no, no, but there is a difference. There is a difference because this is our materials without the preservatives. Right. Exactly. Correct. This is the freshness. <laughs> and it is more of a subtle flavor. And you can you can amp it up with things that yeah. you have in the kitchen. Be, be, without hot sauce. Like you don't have yeah. to amp it up. <laughs> don't have to go all the but way. that's the thing. Yeah, got a little bit you, of lemon. Yeah, I don't want you to feel like you have to just settle for it. I think you should amp it up. Yeah, yeah I amp it up. Diet. We we want it to be worth your labor. So okay. before before uh, you actually, leave I'm this not, call, I don't we're have stay the on the talent of knowing what's missing. You know, like I follow recipes and it tastes good usually, but I cannot tell. Like some people, they would yeah. taste something and it says it needs a little more of this or of that. I I don't have that. I can say when it has what it should have, but I don't know what is missing. Mm. You've got a lot of people in your kitchen though. What what do they know? Your husband is there. This, is that your daughter? Uh, yeah, he's going to taste, and the the real person yeah, let, knows let what's know missing what has come. <laughs> yeah, let, let us, us know, know what he's adding. Exactly. Because yeah. I see he's back there, so let us know what he's adding. Yeah, wow. he's, don't he's say curry. A, don't tell me curry. <laughs> <laughs> he's adding this. Um, uh, it's not curry, but it's this. It is an Indian spice. Uh, it's kind of a homemade secret it's recipe so spice. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Secret. <laughs> Secret. Fennel could also be good in here. Fennel with, with I'll add some herbs. fennel. Try that. Um, okay. Sorry, Fiona, I, I muted you by accident. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I want to get in the chat. A bunch of people are talking about some enchanted broccoli forest. Explain. <laughs> what, what is this? What, what did I miss? What's this enchanted broccoli for? How Someone did, was did cooking it, it earlier and oh. mentioned there's a book by the same title, I think. Oh, wow. Who knows? Who could tell us more about the book and the, the dish, the enchanted oh, broccoli yeah. for? That, this is the first time that I'm making that. And okay. uh, the book is from the woman who wrote the uh, Moosewood cookbook. So I, I guess it's this place called the Moosewood Cafe. And she wrote a cookbook called the Moosewood Cookbook. And it's called the uh, New Enchanted Broccoli Forest Cookbook. And they have a recipe called the Enchanted Broccoli Forest. Here, I can show you a picture of it. That would be great. Thanks for sharing. And you're making a dish from there now? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that Enchanted Broccoli Forest. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. oh, look how, look how cute that is. That yeah, it's got like a little broccoli spear standing in it. Why does it look like it's sitting in a suitcase? <laughs> oh, it looks like a casserole um, dish. I get it. I'm, I'm not yeah, it's a casserole it. dish. Yeah, it does look like a suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> That's adorable. How cute. Okay, yeah, you have to let us know how that comes out for you, Yvette. Thanks for sharing. Are you cooking that right now? 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start making it right now. Like I chopped up the onion and I gotta cook the rice up. Love it. it I think it's kind of like, um, what do you call it? Like a, it's got cheese in it too. It's like a rice with cheese. You like and risotto? Garlic and onion. Yeah, huh? like a casserole. Yes, yes, like a mm -hmm. casserole. But it's also got fresh mint and dill in it. So. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It sounds exciting. Oh, Fiona, those look so good. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> Thanks for that, so, Yvette. Yeah. We're going into Fiona's kitchen now to see. So, oh my gosh. Here are oh, the lasagna bowls. Oh my gosh. Right? Amazing. So cheesy and yummy. I can't take them right now because it's super, super, super duper hot. <laughs> oh, but this is it. what we end up with. Doesn't that look amazing? <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a question about the the shallow um boat could it be possible that it would be ready before the the deeper one yeah i saw you ask that in the chat i meant to respond yeah mm -hmm. it, it, the smaller one would wouldn't need no, as much time but since she was only mel melting the cheese at this point yeah. like yeah they both weren't in for very long okay. yeah yeah because it was already i didn't it was already cooked when I cut it. Yeah. Actually, that's not true. That is not true. It wasn't true. cooked all the way through. No, it wasn't cooked all the way through. So yeah, I mean, if when you're roasting it, the the sh more shallow the canoe might cook faster. Yeah, I'm thinking because when I make it, I'll make a shallow one, so I have something to, to munch on earlier. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm. You know what? Mistakes, so-called mistakes in the kitchen. They create great ideas, right? right? Because this was so unintentional, but now I will do this like intentionally that. going forward. So really yeah. Oh, I, I heard that Ava's is out of the out of the oven now too. Can we come to your kitchen, Ava? I'm coming to your kitchen. Come on over. Show us, show us, show us. Switch my camera. Mm, you let like your guys have some me. more yum. You got all these brown crust on it. That oh, yeah. crust. That looks you really good. Look, look at the effects that she's giving us. <laughs> Maybe a solid Ava, you That was amazing. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to put mine. Something is happening here. Let's see. What's happening? Um, are you not seeing me? Why is well, that? Oh, oh, it's because I need to come over. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm still looking. I was, I got stuck looking at the, the lasagna. It was delicious. All right, where oh. you at? Let me oh. find you. There you Somehow are. Somehow my video yeah. stopped working. Just anyway, um, Ava, I'm inspired to put mine back in the oven to get a little more brown. Brown, right? Yeah. So I just cool. wanted to take it out because I'm always, you know, being mindful of time and wanting to honor your dinner time, right? So this is where we are with my uh, with my boat. Ava took the same recipe and made a casserole out of it, which I love as well. Esther is awesome. going to add a little Indian flair to hers with some Indian spices. Que Talk to us. Question. Yeah. Uh, after we scoop out the spaghetti squash, it's so full. Do we smash it down or something? How it's so Yeah, full. you can just... You can just pat it down a little bit, okay. but you see, I, yeah, just pat it down a little bit. We don't take out any of the squash, right? Leave it all in there. Okay. Yeah, I left it all in. Okay. I left it all in. And you see mine actually kind of, um, it leveled out a bit okay. once I put it in the oven. Oh, hold, hold on one second. I want to spotlight you. Esther, is it possible to show us your, um, show us your table so we can see what you're doing? Because, yay. And Fiona, did you when you when you scooped when you raked the squash, did uh -huh. you take any of it out before you added in your layers? So you layer you layered it. everything on top of it. So I layered okay, on top so yeah. of it, yeah. So yeah. So everything it'll the squash will, will come down after you it put will. everything it'll on top of it. Yeah. It'll Although out. you could you could potentially take some of your squash yeah. out and have that be yeah. another layer. You can I mean yeah. Yeah, yeah, just play around. Definitely play around with it. But I understand, Esther, you're more about following the recipe. So <laughs> mm -hmm. there are definitely different personalities in the kitchen. I'm always like, always. what does it say on this page? Okay, that, I'll start with that. And then I, I just do my, Make own, my own thing from there. <laughs> but then there yeah. are, you know, Elizabeth, you mentioned all the time that you think cooking is a science. And I think in the past, Karen and I have yeah. said, 
if it were a science, I I would fail that that subject. Miserably. Would not be yeah. good. I would I, I would just starve because I just wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. Cooking for me mm-hmm. is just, and I've said this so many times, it's about just being free and and yeah. being creative and just yeah. playing around. I was oh, just about Ava. to use the word play. Ava, Ava, Ava. What's, yeah. what's happening, Ava? She's eating. <laughs> uh, oh, we gotta come, we gotta come. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh my God. You gotta <laughs> watch you. Okay. I'll show you how it looks <laughs> when I put it on a plate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is how She I was trying know. to be sneaky about eating. I was. <laughs> you see me, right? Ooh, take a bite, take a bite. That looks pretty. So that's with the cheese on top. Okay. This is this is the the dish. So let me turn it on. Nice. Yeah. Ooh, that, that looks like that, that looks like a lasagna, y'all. Yeah, it's so good. It's light. Um, it tastes very fresh. Um, I have to get a little bit of the crisp. Wait, let me get the crispy cheese part. Oh, that looks really good. Thank you. Are you are you missing the salt, Ava? I'm not missing it. I'm really not. It tastes really good. Yeah. I might put a All smidge more, but I don't good. really need it, to be honest. All right, let me wait. Let me turn around so you guys can get the. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we she go. She knows the drill now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to watch you eat. It doesn't count otherwise. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Mm. Oh, I get the little, um, I get the little pepper in the back from the pepper jack. Mm. That's good. Like it. Good, good, good. good. Really good. So a lighter take on lasagna. Yeah, oh, it's really good. We're getting, yeah, we're getting a really color. good view of Esther's boats now. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I didn't mean to mute you. Ava, can I show sorry. you guys a <laughs> can I show you guys a cookbook a cookbook that my dad gave my dad and my brother gave me when I was twenty one? Awesome. Yeah, print. Oh, oh cooking it's a, works. I've had I've had this since I was twenty one. It's a great cookbook. Yeah. What you, what's your favorite thing to cook out of it? What makes it so uh, good? The chicken with parmesan. Mm. Anything with and cheese. garlic and olive. Right. <laughs> awesome. But you said it's out of print, so we couldn't get it now. No, it's out of print. So we have to come oh. to your house. <laughs> you make us recipes. Is that what you're you make all you're the recipes in like We're gonna do a book reading next, so we're gonna get together and then <laughs> <laughs> like a fire Look how side down chat. This is. Uh, I would like actually fire enjoy fire that, chat. Fiona. I, I think we should do that. We this should is do how old the book reading. is. It's kind of full. Wow. Oh, but you still have it. What a lovely yeah. memory. Yeah. And, and to cook it and think of him as you do. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yay. Thanks for sharing, Elizabeth. You're welcome. No problem. Esther, can we come over to your kitchen and see you? And see how you're doing? And see if you're tasting anything yet. You're not talking about uh, no, it. You can look at us. It's just going back in the oven for the last. Okay. Did you, ta- did you taste the <laughs> sauce before you put it, put it on the one of oh, one of the boat one of the boats capsized. <laughs> <laughs> no fatalities though, we're good. <laughs> Y'all are crazy people. I love it. How did the sauce taste? Well, she's got the secret ingredient now. What's that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> How, did you like the sauce now? Well, you let me check. It so it's worth your while. <laughs> you have to check. Although I know lots of people who don't oh, eat yeah. while eating. Now it's yeah. really good. Okay, good. all right. That's, that's what we're looking for, honey. Yes, I have indeed. a question. That's what we're going for. Go ahead. Yeah. Who's that? Imani. Um, Imani. So the the squash, after you finish roasting it in the oven and everything, and you take it out, um, how do you know that it's, like, ready to eat? Like, what okay. should the yes. texture of the squash be? Am I... Am I going to be able to bite into the squash the way I would bite into an apple? Like, how do I know? Yeah, so I think it's up to you, depending on the texture that you want. When you're able to rake it, 
mm -hmm. know that you're almost there. Um, but I was able to rake mine and it was still kind of crunchy. So I think sometimes I make it a little too mushy and I'm okay with that as well. So I think you just have to, to know what texture you want. Try it out and put it back in. Okay. But I should be able to bite through it though. You're not biting through the skin, right? You're not okay. talking about... I, yeah. I'm, I'm asking, am I biting through the skin? No. Oh, what so we're, oh, so we're actually, we're not going to eat the skin. We're going to just eat, you know... The inside of the bush. Everything that's exactly. inside. Okay, thank exactly. you. I didn't know if I was, like, picking it up like a pizza. Am I trying to bite through it? Oh, <laughs> I wasn't so sure. You asked. I wasn't that's sure. So that's I'm like, am I biting the ask. foot, like, through it? Okay, so I'm, I'm just eating the inside of the bowl. Okay. Yeah, okay. Exactly. so what I was mentioning is that you want to taste the inside and see how... You know, whether you want it al dente, whether you want it a little softer. So just taste it and try it and see what, what texture you like. And if you want it to cook a little more, just pop it back in the oven. Yeah. It's like its yeah. own bowl or its own it's plate. Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that definitely yeah, would have been trying it later and trying to eat through the skin of the sun. It would have been, like, well, been a hot mess. <laughs> and she should have been like, what is wrong with Karen and Fiona? Why are they <laughs> giving us rubber to eat? Like, this is just not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, ladies. No, thanks for asking, Imani. We're crazy. We're not that crazy. This is um, good. I like yeah. it. I really I like can't it. Wait to have mm. this is in the oven. Does anybody else have any questions for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I oh, was asking cookbooks to mention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was about Who's that? Um, I I'm allergic to tomatoes, and I'm frustrated because there are so many great foods that I can no longer eat. What would what would be a good spin on this minus tomatoes? Mm. What can I make the sauce into? Ooh, that's a really good question. Mm. I'm enjoying the what cheesiness of Fiona's situation mm. right now. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really. We're, Karen, we're gonna come back to, to the tomato question. question. I need to see her I'm, eat this. I'm sorry, I was about I'm to sure. say, Karen, you need to take that because. I'm <laughs> Can we just watch her enjoy that moment right there? Mm, so good. Yeah. Okay. okay. So who was that? Who was asking the question about the tomatoes? Where are you? Uh, uh, yeah, I What's can't your name? tomatoes. So what would I? What would be a, a good twist? Okay, I want to talk to you, but what's your name? I can't. You're not coming. This over is my Yvonne. Screen. Hi, Yvonne. Okay. Yvonne, what would be a good twist for um, tomatoes? I think what comes to mind for me is um, whenever I go and get pizza and they don't have, they, if they don't use a red sauce, they use a white sauce, right? So I think of white sauces. Do you, have you ever tried white sauce? Do you like it? My favorite, my favorite, my favorite. Yeah? <laughs> what, do you put, yeah. what do you put in yours? Um, actually, I like anything that's an Alfredo. Okay. Yum. Um, yeah. I like anything cheese, but um, yeah. because of the cholesterol and things now, I just simply maybe sprinkle grated um, um, Romano or something and, and make a, I don't necessarily make a sauce, just use it okay. as a, a little flavor. Because mm -hmm. I watch the sodium as well as the fat content. Awesome. So, then, so yeah, I would do a white sauce. Something. Yeah. That would be really good. And you could jazz up your white sauce um, and add spinach to it or add other herbs to it to make it a white and green sauce. Um, I like my white sauces to be, like, really garlicky. Somebody's also suggesting you would you could do zucchini. Allergic. Or eggplant. Okay, right. Yeah, I remember I, last week. I, I yeah, Yvonne, I remember last yeah. week you told us that you have so many different allergies. I think yeah. that the things that you are able to eat, this is do so that. versatile. Just exactly. yeah, do the things that you are able to do with the spices. I think you can just switch the spices, you know, to get That's different the flavors other thing. going. Yeah. Like I said, I have to keep it to onion powders garlic but that's all right that's my own thing and and you gave me a good answer i can't use a lot of the herbs mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah 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 and fiona makes a good point the idea is to do what works for you what you exactly. already know works and yeah. and then play around with that and mm -hmm. and and still allow yourself to experiment 
-hmm. you know. And maybe maybe just works. explore the different flavors of cheese. There, you know, yeah. Whatever you, yeah. you, could, you could still eat cheese. That, there you go. Play, play, yeah. play. That's fun. So yeah. I know that some people are starting to log off because it's oh, dinner it's time, time. And, you know, it's you time to just move on with your evening. Thank you so much for and joining like, us for this series. It's, it has been so much fun cooking with you and connecting with you. Um, you know, again, I mentioned this the last time that we met. Probably, I've mentioned, probably mentioned this every time we've met. It's a difficult time, you know? I mean, I think that there, there are blessings no matter what time we're in, but it has been quite a year. And so it's been so beautiful to just be able to Oh, look at that. Beautiful. It's been oh. so beautiful to be able to connect <laughs> with all of you and to cook with you and to have you love the food and to even yeah. have you say, eh, I could do without it. I love that. <laughs> so I'm so glad that you said that tonight. Like that made yeah, me so happy. That's real. Yeah. And yeah. I love that like you're that. just, you know, we're here just being real together and just connecting and taking advantage of technology that allows us to still come together even when we have to be physically apart so thank you so much for being with us and we can't wait to come back 